Hey, hey, it's been a few years since I last uploaded a video, but I am back again. Uh, I don't know for how long, but I'm going to be doing some videos on a new game coming out this month, or sorry, next month, called Alpha Clash. It's kind of a game in that Magic the Gathering design space where the best way I kind of look at it is they looked at Magic the Gathering successors and then took the little changes that those games made and then brought different ones into their own game. So if you've played any of them, you're, you're going to see a lot of the same DNA here, but it, 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 it's all put in a different kind of package. And then the big one for me is it's superhero themed. Uh, well, super people themed because a lot of the superpower people are villains. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, it's, it's a really cool looking game, has some phenomenal artwork. I think the game design uh, and the actual gameplay of it works really well. They are intended to be fairly fast-paced games, very swingy in nature as well. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a video series here on each of the five colors as we get down to the release of the game on July 21st. Um, when that game comes out, uh, we're going to have two starter decks, a black starter deck and a green starter deck. And then the first set is going to have uh, red, black, blue, green, and white all in there, and we're going to have a contender, which is this game's version of Heroes, um, for each of those colors. So yeah, uh, we're going to jump into it. In today's video, we're going to be talking about black and all of the cards therein. It's worth noting black is also part of the starter decks. Um, the black starter deck is centered around a contender named Moxie. So let's jump in with her. In the top right, you're going to see the health points. Uh, in this case, it's 30. That's how much it takes to down uh, a contender. Uh, the starting five contenders all have 30. I'm sure in the future we might see that change. The bottom right is their affiliation. In this case, this uh, in this case, Moxie is an alpha hunter. She hunts alphas, which is the term used to describe people with superpowers. Her attack and defense are one and zero. Pretty self-explanatory for these types of games. And her abilities are split between two different uh, blocks of text. So we have one at 30 and one at 10. That's uh, that's based off of their health. So in this case, Moxie starts with the top ability. And then when Moxie is 10 or lower, uh, she has the second ability there. So her first ability is Alpha Hunter Clash cards you control may attach more than one weapon. Uh, clash cards are this game's version of units, creatures, monsters, you know, you name it. And then her second ability is once per turn during your primary phase, you may attach a weapon you control to an Alpha Hunter Clash card you control without paying that weapon's attach cost. So kind of as you can imagine here, uh, Moxie's all about weapon accessories. Um, as far as her two abilities go, um, they don't immediately excite me because obviously it's all about those weapons. Um, if the weapons ha are good, then Moxie's good. If the weapons that you have out are bad, then Moxie is kind of bad. When you compare her to the other contenders, she's probably the, I, in my opinion, the least consistent because you are really relying on getting some good weapons out and having clash cards that can utilize those weapons. Now, her second ability is very powerful, but like I said, you, you need to have the, the clash cards out to actually use them. So... With that out of the way, let's continue to talk about some other forms of Moxie. So the second Moxie card we're going to be talking about is Moxie Preparing for Battle. This is a Clash card. She's an Alpha Hunter. Um, one drop, one attack, one defense, trigger, enter. You may draw one card. Uh, solid. I mean, obviously, this is a great card. You just get free draw off of it. Um, she exists as a chump blocker, or in Moxie's case, she exists as a card that can possibly use some weapons. Uh, it's fine. I think you. I mean, you have. You pretty much have to run four copies of her in a black deck. My concern is because of how generic this card is and how useful it could be. Um, pretty much any deck that's splashing black cards in it is probably running this card, right? Because it's just a free draw on play. Um, and it's a one. So I, you know, it's a, it's a pretty solid card for a common. This is really good. Um, obviously when looking at other card games, you might see like, well, card draw, I mean, that's always really good and it is, but in this game, uh, games go by pretty fast and card draw while important, isn't as game breaking as other games typically are. But yeah, so that's Moxie preparing for battle. All right. So Next card is going to be Moxie Alpha Hunting Specialist. Really like the card artwork on this one. 
Uh, this is Moxie's two drop. Uh, it's still an alpha hunter. Uh, this one's an uncommon clash card. Three attack, one defense. Trigger, enter. You may reveal the top three cards of your deck. If you do, you may put a Weber or Edwards clash card with an initial resource cost of three or less from among them into your clash zone engaged. That means tapped. Then put the remaining cards into your oblivion, your discard pile. This card is really quite good, except if you miss, this card is really bad. Um, you know, just suddenly nuking three cards from top of deck hurts a lot. Um, she's a two cost three once. Her stat line is fine. I mean, at the very least, you have a decent statted clash card in play. And the, her effect is a may, right? So you can optionally choose to use it or not use it. Um... Yeah, I, I mean, she is what it is. I, honestly, I think a, a lot of the times you're probably going to want to try to get Weber in this situation. Uh, or sorry, Edwards. I think Edwards in this situation. Edwards is a card that when he's put in play, um, he'll search the top five for a weapon. And then uh, I think he puts the weapon in play. So essentially, you throw down Moxie, Alpha Hunting Specialist. She pulls out Edwards, and then Edwards pulls out a weapon. Um, and the weapon, I believe, for Edwards is, I think, three and below resource cost. So on turn two, you can get a 3-1 out, a 1-1. One, one, that's what Edwards is. He's a 1-1. One, one, and then a three-drop weapon, which is pretty cool. But you could also miss all of those things. So uh, this is a card that, as we get more Weber and Edwards cards, obviously gets better because you can really build into that. Um, and if you have some way, if you use maybe like some... if I don't know if white has it, but um, if you have some cards that let you kind of sift through the top cards of your deck and stack it in a way that's advantageous for you, put things on top or whatever, um, this gets pretty good. So yeah, Moxie Alpha Hunting Specialist. Okay, so now we're on to the next Moxie. This is probably the worst one out of the bunch. Um, so four cost Moxie is, also I don't like the artwork, is a 3-3. Three, three. With Alpha Hunter, it's a Clash card. It's uncommon, strangely enough. This card gets plus one, plus two, as long as one or more weapons are attached to it. So, in essence, this is a four cost, four, five. Uh, yeah, it's not, like, exciting to me. Um, it does go well with the fact that, like, you have, card, you have uh, weapons that are going to give flight. And so having a card with three or four, sorry, four innate attack there with flight in addition, um, in addition to anything flight gives you, um, this is a pretty cool card in that regard. Um, but I don't know. I, I feel like you're going to find other cards to fill this slot or maybe on turn four, you're looking to put two cards out or play a weapon, attach a weapon. You know what I mean? It's like, do you really want to spend your 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 four your turn four resources on just this card? And then on top of that, there's nothing that would let you attach for free. Um except I mean there are some cards that would let you do that, but uh what I mean is there are no weapons that innately attach for free. So yeah, I I don't know. It's it's a usable card, it's a boring card. I think um as the game goes on, this is a card that gets cut, possibly. Um, but maybe if you have a free weapon, like a, a weapon that has no attach cost and just does things, this card gets more exciting. So yeah, that's Moxie. Just base Moxie, no no tagline. <laughs> All right, next up we got a really cool looking one, but I have some mixed feelings on it. So Moxie Prime to Clash. This is a five cost, three, three. This is a rare, uh, rare Clash card, Alpha Hunter. You may reduce the resource cost to play this card by one black for each weapon you control. Trigger enter. You may send target alpha clash card with an initial resource cost of two or less to oblivion. You may only play one moxie prime to clash per turn. So, I mean, here's the thing, right? Let's say you have one weapon out. This is a four, three, three. You have two weapons out. She's a three, three, three. You have three weapons out. She's a two, three, three. Um... I don't know if you're going to routinely be able to hit three or four weapons out when you want to play her. Obviously, if a game stalls, if a game goes on really long, this is a nice late game kind of card in the sense that she comes out for free, which means you have more resources to attach stuff to her. And then uh, she could also blow up a chump blocker, which is nice. If they have like a two or lower cost alpha card, 
that has flight, this is a that's a good opportunity to just snipe it out of play. I think um I think Magnate, which is the green contender, I think he has a two cost two two with flight and break breakthrough, if I remember correctly. I know someone does. I don't know if it's him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's him actually. So that's a good opportunity is, you know, uh, it's turn four, turn five. You play this for two, maybe for three. You blow up a, a possible flyer and then you attach to Prime to Clash a weapon that gives her flight. And then now she's able to just jump right into it, right? But outside of that, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense that it's rare. The, I think the the final little line there that you can only play one per turn is a little odd i like i don't know if there's i guess anything that could potentially be free maybe that's what they're thinking if, if something could be free it needs to be limited to once per turn so you can't do some kind of like endless loop um but yeah it's a it's a fine card it's a fine rare um there are better but and i like i said i really love the artwork and then lastly the granddaddy of them all moxie fully loaded so this is an eight drop six seven epic clash Alpha Hunter card. Uh, it has flight innately. If you control two or more unattached weapons, you may reduce the resource cost to play this card by one. So it could be a seven, six, seven with flight. On enter, uh, you may attach one weapon you control to this card without paying its attached cost. Very nice. The resource cost to activate traps you control is reduced by one. So there's a lot going on with this card. Um, the synergy of traps, honestly, is not to be uh, underestimated. I think there's a clash ground or something that also can reduce the cost to reveal traps by like two. So you can potentially, with this out, you can potentially reduce the cost to play a trap by three, um, which is pretty insane. Traps pretty much, I think we've only seen traps go up to three. So it guarantees that you can just flip them for free, which is nuts. Um, flight on a six seven is good. Uh, the enter effect of attaching a weapon for free, it's nice, but the weapons you'd want to attach as of right now, as of the first set, the weapons you'd want to attach already give flight. So you're kind of losing a little bit of the utility there. Um, there's a weapon that gives plus four, plus four in flight. So the four, four on this is nice. I mean, you get, you know, it's a 10, 10 swing with flight. That's, that's cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, the reality though, is it's going to be hard potatoes to hit eight resources or even seven resources if you got that reduction. So, I mean, are you running this card in a Moxie deck? Maybe, I mean, maybe you're running, uh, two, three copies of it. You're probably going to end up using it as a resource most of the time. Um, but yeah, uh, that's Moxie fully loaded. It also has the iconic rare art version of it, which is really, really cool looking, um, and yeah, not much else to say. It's, it's an epic card. It's really cool. Are you going to be using it a lot? I think you're, I think you're going to have a hard time trying to get this on, in, on the table. So let's move on to talking about the, uh, black weapons that they have available to them. Now that we have an idea of who's going to be wanting those weapons, let's talk about the weapons. So first off, we got Weber's binoculars. This is a one cost uh, to play, one cost to attach. It's common. Whenever the attached clash card attacks, you may engage this card. If you do, look at the top three cards of your deck. You may reveal an accessory or clash card with an initial resource cost of two or less from among them and put it in your hand. Put the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck in any order. So uh, this card's pretty pretty good um especially early in the game uh in terms of the accessories that he could reveal uh or the, the binoculars could reveal i should say um we got other weber's binoculars we got um there's a card after this we're going to look at called moxie sidearm that's also one drop and that's about it uh trap cards are considered accessories so you can pick up the trap card i think there's a one cost trap card in black if you're playing multicolor, this isn't color specific, you know. Um, obviously, it takes a black to play and attach, but it doesn't care about the card that's attached to. It doesn't care about the card it's searching for. So you can pull in. I know like white has some good early game accessories. Um, I think red does too. Um, so you can pull those things out, and that's pretty good. And then obviously, if you're looking for low cost clash cards, which is something green is looking for, you can pull out some 
early game green cards for free. So really, really cool card. I think you're going to see this a lot. <laughs> um, honestly, Weber's Binoculars, I think you're going to see it a lot. Moxie does enjoy it just because she has a lot of ways of getting accessories out. Um, there are ways to reduce that attachment cost so it is free. Um, and then it's going to help you accelerate how many cards you're drawing into uh, with you know accessories and clash, which is just a generically useful thing. Um, and then also, as we looked at, there are cards that want you to have more accessories in play, more weapons in play, right? Um, the ready to clash moxie gets that minus one cost for each uh, weapon you have in play. So there you go. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is considered a weapon, funnily enough. All right. Now we got the tried and true moxie sidearm. This is a one cost, one black to attach. Attached card gets plus one, plus one weapon accessory common. This is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's your standard it's your standard attachment card, right? Um, there's not much to really say here. It's a fine card. As a reminder, when a clash card is defeated um, and sent to Oblivion or whatever, um, all of its attached weapons just go right back into the accessory zone, I believe it's called. So this is this is always going to be available to you, you know? And uh, I think it's a really good card. Just like Weber's Binoculars, I think you're probably splashing four copies of this all the time in any Moxie deck. Um, and I think there is an argument to be said that you might see this in decks that splash black, but I could also see them possibly not doing it just because not everyone's going to care about the one, one and mostly for Moxie, you just care about having weapons on board. So that's a uh, Moxie sidearm. All right. Now we're getting into the first kind of like big weapon available and that's going to be Moxie's light power armor. This is a three cost rare weapon accessory with an attach of two black attached card gets plus two plus two and flight this card can only be attached to alpha hunter clash cards so that's very pertinent of course um so despite the fact that this only costs one black to run um unless you're an alpha hunter you're not using it and right now um there aren't a lot of alpha hunters outside of black uh, outside of monty uh, some moxie cards that you're really going to be seeing but um, I'm sure you could still kind of do some interesting things if you really wanted to. It does take two black, however, to attach. So you're going to need some amount of black resources available to you. The 2-2 two -two flight uh, is pretty good. Um, overall, I mean, obviously you're spending five resources in total to give a card 2-2 two -two flight. Um, but like I said before, there are ways to reduce that attach cost. And we saw ways to attach cards for free. Um, and this is just a really solid card. Uh, and so I'm going to just jump into Moxie's heavy power armor, which is essentially the same thing, uh, but different, uh, better. Uh, this is a four cost, three to attach. It is a epic weapon accessory. Um, attached clash card gets plus four, plus four in flight. But when you play it, you have to deal one damage to your contender. And if you control three or more alpha hunter clash cards, this costs one less to attach. Um, this card can only be attached to Alpha Hunter Clash cards. So both of the power armors can only go to Alpha Hunters. Um, but this one can... Uh, honestly, this is uh, just a really good weapon. It's really, really good. Um, you know, uh, there's a world, I guess, where you run this in Torque, which would be kind of funny. Um, you'd have to have some Alpha Hunter Clash cards in there. You'd have to be splashing some black in there. But there's a world where you run it in Torque. Torque is a red contender that draws a card when he takes damage, uh, non-clash damage, I think. And uh, but other than that, yeah, I mean it's a it's a solid thing. It gets plus four, plus four in flight. You know, what more can you say? Um, the minus one on the cost to attach is notable because I believe there's a clash ground that reduces it by an additional two. Um, so you can just attach this freely, which is really good. And it's important to note that like. If, you're, if your clash card attacks, right? So let's say you have a card, let's say this is attached to something. Let's say I just have a one, one in play and I attach the power armor to them. That one, one is now a five, five with flight. They attack, they do five damage. Then let's say I have another one, one in play. I can just attach this to that one, one and now they're a five, five with flight, they attack. This doesn't, this doesn't get exhausted, right? It doesn't engage in quotes, to do its thing. 
And so I could just freely attach it. And because you can get attachment costs to free um, or there's effects that will attach freely, you could utilize the same weapon accessory multiple times. And this is the weapon accessory to do it with because it is so big. It's so, I mean, like this is your, this is part of your win condition. Like for Moxie decks, especially this is part of your win condition. You're trying to get this out there. You're trying to attach it to multiple cards. It's a good incentive to run cheap clash cards. So you always have uh, something out to take advantage of. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a cool card. It is epic though. Keep that in mind. Um, I think just like with the other weapon accessories we looked at, you're probably running four ofs in your deck. Um, I think you'd be hard pressed to lower this to anything other than four. Because I just think it's that good. You always want to have one available to you. Um, so yeah, that's Moxie's heavy power armor and light power armor. Alrighty, next up, let's talk about some of the support cards you're going to be using here. Of course, there's Sergeant Weber, which is referenced um, in one of Moxie's variants, uh, one of her versions that will pull in a Weber or Edwards off the top three cards of your deck. So uh, Sergeant Weber is just a 2 2 2. He's an Alpha Hunter Clash card, so he can equip a lot of the weapon accessories we just talked about. He can benefit from a lot of the other stuff going on in black right now. Um, 2 2 2, it's fine. It's a common, it's what you'd expect but it can also be uh, searched for off of Moxie. So there is a good argument that you're still running this card, even though it's nothing really exciting. We also have Weber, Weber Weapons Expert, <laughs> Weber Weapons Expert. He is a two cost one one. This is an uncommon version of Weber. He's still a clash card, he's still alpha hunter, but he has a trigger enter. You may attach a weapon in your accessory zone to an alpha hunter clash card you control without paying that weapons attach cost. So this is phenomenal, like borderline, like kind of crazy is an uncommon. <laughs> so obviously like he costs two. you can think of that as your attachment cost, right? But it's just so important that like, okay, let's say you're in mid to late game. You have Moxie's heavy power armor in play. You need to get a body on the board and then you need to attach that power armor to the body. This is that card, right? This is that card where you just pay two, bam, the power the power armor is just automatically attached to him. Um, or you can, I mean, you could attach it to anybody, but you're probably gonna attach it to him himself. And then there you go, you're off to the races and you get to make use of it. So I think he's a very important card. I think you are, once again, kind of something I said earlier, hard pressed to really reduce this below four. I think you're running this at four, like all the time. I think the two, two, two version of Weber, you could arguably get away with dropping that down. Um, or even not running at all. But this is, I think this is going to be crucially important for a little while in Moxie decks. And then next up, we're going to talk about Colonel Edwards. This is was, this was also referenced in one of the Moxie cards. Um, so this is a three cost, one, one, uh, uncommon alpha hunter clash card with the trigger enter. You may reveal the top five cards of your deck. If you do, you may put a weapon with an initial resource cost of three or less from among them into your accessory zone, then put the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck in any order. So, I, you know, pretty good card. I mean, this is letting you play the light power armor for free. That's what you really want to do is you want to get that light power armor. There is no two cost weapon um, in black right now. So there's not like a second best choice and there are no other three costs. So you're really hoping to get light power armor off of Colonel Edwards. If you hit something like a Moxie sidearm or Weber's binoculars, you're probably a little bummed. But if you hit nothing at all, you're even more bummed because Weber, or sorry, Edwards at 311, not a very good stat line for a three cost card. You know what I mean? Um, I think there's a good argument that you might not run this card at all, uh, especially if you don't want to take the gambit with that one Moxie that searches out Edwards and Weber. Um, just because he could end up kind of being a semi-dead card in play. I mean, you can attach weapons to him, sure. But I don't know. Dropping three resources for something like that, it's it's rough. Um, it'll really kind of depend on how you, when you're playing these Moxie decks, how often are you successfully hitting an Edwards into light power armor? How often are you going Moxie, two cost Moxie into Edwards into power armor, right? How often are you hitting those things? Um, because if you're not hitting them often enough, then he might not be worth running. Uh, that being said, 
as more accessories or sorry, weapon accessories get added to the game and you have more three costs, more two cost options. I think Colonel Edwards looks pretty good. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head if there are uh, if there are any in any of the other colors that you could potentially splash. Because at the end of the day, this is a one one black minimum to play him. So you could splash him in other decks if you had other three cost or lower weapon accessories that you're looking for. Um, but yeah, uh, he's he's an interesting card that you're gonna definitely have to consider whether or not you're gonna take him or not. Alrighty, so next up, let's talk about the trap cards. So there's two trap cards in black. There's Sharpshooter Moxie. This is a one cost trap card. Kind of how you'd expect, you play the card face down, you say you're playing a trap, and then you don't pay the resource cost until you flip the card face up to activate it. It says on the card when you get to activate it, so you, it's a counter to a play. So when somebody plays a card, a, a clash card, you can flip this up, resolve its effect, pay its cost. You may activate this trap if the clash card being paid has an initial resource cost of two or less. That card is sent to oblivion instead of entering play. I think this is a pretty cool card. Um, it definitely has some characters that this is more devastating to than others. I mean, you got to think of it this way, right? You're spending a resource in a card to stop somebody from playing a card and wasting one to two resources. So it's a possible plus one if they spent two resources on the card. Uh, otherwise, you're, you're, you're evening out. That being said, the opportunity cost of making them lose a you know potential combo piece is pretty juicy. And as we saw before, there are ways to reduce trap costs uh, by a, a number. You know, and so this could potentially be free which is even better because then you're just using a card to potentially get a plus one or plus two off your opponent. So I think this is a pretty cool card. I think it's a pretty cool trap. Obviously, it's going to be fairly tele uh, telegraphed, but um, there are there are a lot of traps that target stuff that's two or lower uh, on the initial resource cost. So you just got to keep that in mind when you're when you're playing the game that your two or lower cards you can't super rely on being useful, especially if there's a face down in your opponent's side of the field. That includes, unfortunately, that Weber we just looked at a little bit ago that comes in and attaches a card. Um, you know, it would suck to play that, and then immediately uh, he gets blown up by a trap. But yeah, so that's Sharpshooter Moxie. It's a pretty cool card. I don't think you have to run this, but I think based off of your experiences in the matchup, you might very well want to include this. I think it's a pretty cool card uh, against Torque because right off the bat, I'm thinking of Torque's really really strong epic uh one cost card that's like yeah it's an insane card this is a good counter to it because it just yoinks it off the field before it ever becomes a problem but yep that's sharpshooter moxie and then we'll also talk about missile barrage this is a three cost and all three have to be black um trap accessory it's uncommon it counters an attack target attacking clash card it's minus two minus two until end of turn if you control two or more weapons, this trap costs two less to activate. Um, so ideally, you're you're doing it in that right. This you're, ideally you're treating this like a one cost trap um, that's going to do minus two minus two to an opposing clash card. Um, hey, you know that might kill the clash card if it drops its its defense down to zero. Uh, it might just save your clash card if if they're exchanging blows. Um, it's fine. This isn't this isn't something that gets me like super excited. Um, but it, it's fine. It's a, it's a cool card. Um, I don't think there's a lot you can really say about trap cards just because there's no way you can really play into them. You can't, you know, it's, it's just all based off of the, the pairing, you know, who you're going against. Do, are they going to have cards that you really need these to counter? Cause at the end of the day, this could be a weapon accessory. You know, you could have drawn a weapon accessory instead of this. You could have drawn, a really powerful moxie card instead of this do you really need the trap card in your deck do you really need to be drawing it um, is it going to make a bigger difference to you than if it's something else and i think in a lot of situations you might find that the answer to that is no you would have rather drawn something other than missile barrage or other than moxie's sharpshooting or whatever um i you know, I could see this being useful against Magnate. Um, I could see this being useful once again against Torque. This just will snipe Torque's cards, which is pretty cool. Um, kind of. I actually, uh, a little bit of an asterisk there. I actually don't think it might not be that great against Torque. We'll see. But 
Um, yeah, it's it's a fine card. It's it's okay. I personally, I would maybe be tempted to put two of these in at most, um, or maybe just zero. Honestly, I think Moxie is really about uh, self agency and trying to make the plays on their own, and having these kind of reactive cards um, is going to be a little bit rough to take advantage of. All right, before we move on to uh, the Clash Grounds in black, I did skip a Moxie card. Um, Moxie is another one drop called Captain Maxine Riggins. This is a one cost, two one common. That's all it is. So she has her one cost, one one that uh, on play draws a card. She also has this one cost, two one. Cool. For our first Clash Grounds, we got Denver. Um, this is a one cost clash grounds. So if you're unfamiliar with clash grounds, these are essentially like, um, field spells from Yu-Gi-Oh or I forget what they're called in Netrunner, but essentially they're a card that affects both players. I believe only one can be active at a time, but I, I might be wrong on that. Um, so Denver is a one cost, uh, alpha hunters and rogues. That's that kind of compass symbols, the rogues, alpha hunters and rogues, uh, Clash cards get plus one, plus zero, and then trigger, enter, you may draw two cards, then discard one card. I think this is a really good clash ground, especially for uh, like a nice cheap common clash ground. Um, There aren't a lot of alpha hunter and rogues right now. You're gonna mostly see them in white and black. So if you're going into a matchup against blue, green, or red, uh, odds are you're gonna benefit from that more than they will. Um, and especially useful since you have a lot of flight, right? So when you're running flight, you want to be hitting hard with it. Um, so I like that. Uh, the trigger enter is really nice. Draw two cards and discard one card. I think that's pretty good. Um, there are actually a lot of decks that can benefit from that quite well to the point that they might even run this, um, even if they don't benefit from the first line. So I could see this as just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to throw this out here just so I can draw two and discard one. Because there are some cards that are going to get things back from your Oblivion pile. Um, so that, you know, you get to put something in your Oblivion pile that you otherwise would have had a hard time getting in there. Um, and then just drawing two cards is really nice. So that's Denver. Uh, really, really solid um, common clash ground. Then you have United Nations Headquarters. So this is the big one uh, for black. Um, it's a three cost. It's an uncommon clash ground in New York. Um, Alpha Hunter Clash cards get plus two, plus zero, and Interception. So Interception's just like Reach. It lets them counter flying cards. Um, Attached costs of weapons you control are reduced by one black. So this is, you know, this is kind of what I was referencing before as a a way to reduce the attachment costs. Um, Yeah, this card's really good. I I feel like if you're playing a Moxie deck, you are 100% running this. You're probably running four, maybe three copies, because uh, obviously any excess that you have that you don't need, you just turn them into a resource. But like I always say, you can only do that so many times. So three, I think, seems pretty reasonable. But if you're worried about your opponent playing their own clash grounds or destroying this or something like that, you know, you have an alternative. The interception is nice, but it's not mind blowing because Moxie herself. Uh, or Moxie decks are going to have a lot of flight innately in them. You know, you have the power armors, you have some of the Moxie cards have flight. The interception is useful for things like Weber, um, and general Edwards. Cause they're, you know, they get an interception. Cool. But I, I, you know, it is a little bit wasted there. Um, the plus two, very good. You know, it's very good, especially in a flight deck and the attach cost reduction. Very, very good. I mean, you attach three weapons, boom, you made back your cost on this. So I think this is a really good card, and I think it's absolutely going to be in every Moxie deck. All righty. Now we're going to be talking about Black's action cards available to them. They have two. They have Weber's Assistance. This is a one-cost action card. Typical kind of spell card thing, right? You can play it on your turn. Um, return target weapon from your Oblivion to your hand. So remember how I just talked about with Denver, where you can send stuff to your Oblivion? Here's a good example of a card that makes uh, takes advantage of that. Um, you can essentially at any time bump it back to your hand if you really need it. Um, if for whatever reason your opponent destroys a weapon, this gives it back. I don't think this is a mandatory card. I do think it's pretty, I think it's a cool card, but I don't think it's a mandatory card by any means. I think if anything, you might see this run in other decks, 
um, for other contenders that possibly might have weapons they care about um, and they're discarding them or something like that. I think if a meta ever shifts to weapon destruction, this becomes a popular card. And of course, I think in the future, as we get more weapons that might go to Oblivion, um, more cards that counter weapons, all that stuff, I think we can see it there or other cards that like are draw two, discard one, right? Um, so yeah, I, I think there there is a future for this card, but it's not tremendously exciting right now. You are just trading one resource for any weapon from your hand, which is cool. I mean, it does make this kind of like a wild card. And I think mid to late game, it certainly makes this useful. But early on, you know, you're you're pretty you're pretty pinched for those resources. The second action card is surprise. So surprise is a quick action card. So as you can imagine, you can play this pretty much at any time. It costs three resources. Um, counter attack. Send target attacking clash card to oblivion after this clash. So you know, it, it's a good card. <laughs> what can I say? It, it it blows up six costs, five costs, seven costs, eight costs. You know, any big boy card out there, you chump block it and then surprise, blow it up. Um, I I think you're definitely running this. There's an argument to be made that you're not running it at four, or you're kind of you're 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 looking at what the matchup might be. Some people this is more devastating to than others, but uh, it's a good card, and uh, you you don't even have to block right if they just attack your your contender with something big, you can pop this and blow them up. Um, it's not the great greatest use of it, but it's still you know you have ways to use it. Um, and uh, and destroy an opponent's clash card even if they're not expecting it. So that's pretty cool. Um, as of right now, there's nothing you can't really combo this with anything interesting. Um, I I think it would be kind of cool to see with like black if they have like C4 or detonations or you know something that like you attach to an opponent's clash card and then when they're when they die it it detonates and does damage to their contender. I think it's a really cool aspect uh, that would make something like this or even like the traps more useful, give you more agency over it. It's like, okay, I really want to get rid of cards on your board. I set them up for a little like kind of uh, slam dunk, you know, combo here. And then you pop surprise or whatever else to do it. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I think, that, you know, you could maybe run this. Um, it is going to pretty much always give you a good trade, right? Um, if you're using this on an opponent's, three, four, five, six cost cards, you know, you're getting a, a good trade on it. You're, you're spending a card and some resources to get rid of a card and resources. The only thing you have to keep in mind is, you know, it's after the clash. So they're getting to do whatever damage they want to do with that card first. Um, and even if you're, if you're chump blocking, now you're losing two cards to stop their one card. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. It's not the, the most amazing card in the world, but it is a, a pretty nice one. Real quick, I figured I'd showcase the Clash buff for black. Uh, there's a Clash buff in all five colors. They all do the same exact thing. Notably, Clash buffs can only be run, I think, four copies a deck. And I believe you can only use one per Clash. I don't know if it's one per turn or one per Clash. But um, yeah, it's a, it's, a really cool, it's a really cool concept. Essentially, you can play these during a Clash to buff your card or your contender by plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. And then you draw a card and you replace it. And that's it. Um, you can't add more than one clash buff card. Like you can't have the the white clash buff card in your black deck because they all have the limitation that you can only play them if your contender is their color. Um, so yeah, not much else to say about these. It's it's a really well thought out system. I'm, I, I like it. I'm a little surprised that the rules regarding clash buffs aren't printed on the cards themselves. Maybe at some point in development they were, and they just realized, ah, we'll just, we'll just uh, make it a little cleaner and remove that text. Um, but yeah, that's what you know. It's a cool card. It's a cool game design, um, and this is what Blacks looks like. Incoming support. To wrap things up, we're going to talk about the cards that aren't really Moxie specific in any way, shape, or form. They're just there. Um, we're going to start with Morak on the hunt. Morak is part of what is called the discarded alignment. That's that kind of like biohazard symbol at the bottom right. He's a rare card as well. So, yeah, you're going to primarily see like weird monster looking things in this. Um, he is a 4-4-3 four, four, with trigger enter. You may send target clash ground with an initial resource cost of three or less to oblivion. 
Now, uh, hey, you know what? That destroys the United Nations. That's pretty good. And it's a decent trade. You're spending four um, to put out a 4-3 that's also going to blow up a three-cost clash ground. Um, that's a good trade. Granted, you know, the, the trigger on enter effect for those clash grounds is already going to go off, so your opponent already benefited from them. Um, ideally, you're doing it because you're not benefiting from them for some reason, um, which is a little wonky, but uh, it can happen. Obviously, like if you're going up against an alpha, their clash grounds are usually going to buff alphas, of which you are not. And so just getting it out of play is, is pretty decent. Um, it's a fine card. It costs only two black minimum to play uh, uh, and then just four resources. So you could you could potentially splash this in a multicolored deck um, if you're worried about clash grounds. I, not much else to say here because it, it really relies on what the meta ends up being and what clash grounds end up getting used. Um, I think him blowing up a one cost clash ground is less exciting though. Uh, you really want to try to hit that three or two cost. Then we got Kilimanjaro, Ascendant Champion. I really, really love the artwork on this. I really hope we see this guy as a contender someday soon because he looks sick. This is a four cost, four, four. And there in the bottom right, you see that symbol? That's the alpha symbol. So that means he is super powered. Um, trigger enter. You may discard any number of cards from your hand. For each card you discarded, target clash card gets minus two, or sorry, minus zero, minus two until end of turn. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is an epic card, by the way. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, four, 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 fine. Um, the fact that you can potentially uh, kill, just straight up snipe an opponent's card here is pretty interesting. If you are, for some reason, flush with cards... You could get rid of three, four cards off of this by discarding them to just blow up your opponent's strongest card. And quite frankly, I mean, a lot of the cards we've looked at today, uh, their power or sorry, their defense might reach like four, maybe five. So if you if they're at four and you use this, I mean, they're dead. You just get rid of two cards. Boom. They're dead. They're gone. Um, it's it's an interesting proposition. It's a good counter to stuff that might, you know have defenses against damage or defenses against being destroyed because uh this doesn't destroy it right it just reduces its defense to zero and then it it dies um you could also just you know maybe you just use it to make it so that your opponent doesn't block with the card uh or it's it maybe you use it so that your opponent uh if it's a, the card's attacked it dies in that combat there's you know it, there's just interesting options there I suspect what we'll see is when Kilimanjaro uh, does show up as a contender, we're going to see a lot of cards like this. Um, a lot of cards designed around maybe some recursion, shuffling cards in your discard pile back into your deck and then drawing, um, stuff like that. I could see that coming around, in which case this card gets really interesting. As it is right now, are you running this in a Moxie deck? I don't know. Probably not. I could see it maybe in like a Magnate deck, which we're going to look at later. But you really have to run it in a deck that's going to be drawing a lot of cards. Um, and even better if it has some level of recursion. And I just don't think Moxie really benefits very much from using this card. Uh, well, I actually, I should say, I don't think Moxie benefits from using this card at all. It's not even an Alpha Hunter, which a lot of Moxie's things really care about. So, yeah. But it's a cool card. Um, and I really want to see this in its like foiled glory. You know what I mean? Next up, we got Rizlak the Depraved. I actually really like this artwork. This is a really cool um, discarded design. And I hope we get a discarded contender at some point. And I hope it's Rizlak because Rizlak looking sick. Um, so Rizlak the Depraved is a 5-5-2 five, five, with Necrotic. Any clash card that is dealt damage by this card will be sent to oblivion after the clash. So it's a, you know it's death touch, it's poison, it's you know whatever you want to call it. Um, if you touch them, they die. If three or more alpha and or discarded clash cards were defeated this turn, you may reduce the resource cost to play this card by three black. So Rizlak uh, can essentially be played as a two cost five two with necrotic. Really, really good. I mean, you're put in this really uncomfortable situation with Rizlak where he hits board and you swing with him. Your opponent's like, well, I mean, he's swinging for a lot. Five is a lot of damage. Do I really want to block it with a 
you know, like a four, four or a five, five or something like that, like a big guy. Cause then they're going down instantly. Um, the necrotic aspect of him, I find a little odd that it's there. I'm not really sure, you know, necrotic death touch, right? You're typically seeing that on cards with low attack. You know, they have low attack, they have high defense, maybe they low both. It doesn't matter. And then a low cost. It's a little odd that it's on a card with five attack. Maybe it's trying to this. I think this is the only one in the game right now that has this keyword. Maybe it's the devs trying to warm us up to it. Um, of course, it's a good way to take down a. It's a good way to take down like those big eight cost cards, right? That have a ton of health. They have like seven, eight health points. Um, it's a good way to deal with that. But outside of that, I mean, you know, five is enough. Most of the time, five is enough to take out other cards. But anyway, there's Rizlak. He's also an epic card um, in terms of rarity, and uh, and also notably doesn't come from Earth. Comes from Bardaga. I don't know what uh, the previous card we looked at was from, but yeah. Lastly, the granddaddy of it all, Alpha Aster, giver of all. So this is the uh, box art card, and it also has like this uh, version of it, an Alpha Rare, which is like the rarest card in the game. Um, it's an eight cost nine, nine, uh, it's alignment is that of the progenitors. So, uh, based off the story, the, the lore of the universe, they believe progenitors are kind of people that started this whole conflict or something like that. I, I don't quite recall, but, um, you know, they're old, <laughs> you know, thousands and thousands of years old, right? Uh, he has a number of keywords, irrefutable, cannot be prevented from entering play. Observant can't attack the turn it enters play. So that's uh, that's this game's version of uh, summoning sickness. Unrivaled, only one card with a unrivaled is allowed per deck. I think he's the only one in the game with it. I might be wrong, but I think he is. Trigger enter. Each player sends all other clash cards they control to from their clash zone to oblivion. Then each player searches their deck for one alpha clash card and puts it into play cards that enter play this way lose all effects and abilities until end of turn each player then shuffles their deck done so you know this is it's kind of a funky situation now he's black but as you can see he does not have a minimum requirement so you can you can actually just run him in anything and i would say you're never running him in moxie probably because moxie does not have alpha cards you're probably running him in Magnate. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's another like really good alpha uh, clash card, but you're probably running him in Magnate. Um, you throw him out. You pull out the eight, eight or seven cost Magnate alpha card. He just has big numbers, and you just swing with him, right? Um, that being said, we talked about it before, but getting the eight resources is going to be tough. Um, and not every deck is, well, and also getting, uh, getting this card is going to be tough too, right? Um, you only need one. So that's nice. <laughs> you only need one. Uh, and you might still run it just for the lols. Maybe nine times out of 10, you just turn them into a resource. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it's a, it's a really, really good card. If you can play it, if you have a good alpha clash card in your deck, alpha aster is a really, really good card. Um, but not for Moxie, most likely. <laughs> so yeah, that is uh, that is Alpha Aster, and that is all of the black cards. So thank you for joining me on this video. I hope it was uh, informative. I hope it was useful to you. Um, I will be going through all of the colors as we get closer and closer to the release date of this game, and uh, which is like July 21st, I believe. So July 21st is when the first set officially launches. I think it's already been delivered to Kickstarter backers, um, but it uh, officially will be retail ready on July 21st. I think that's also in Team Covenant will probably send out their subscriptions for. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing a superhero card game. We actually really don't have a lot. Um, and you know what? Uh, they got they got me in their game as a result of that because <laughs> there's not a lot of options. Um, so yeah, uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one.